Hello and welcome back to another episode of Let's Develop Code Hunt. In this episode, I'm going to continue uh, on sector 8, this time task 3 after I finished the first two tasks in the last episode. Um, even though I did not manage to get the full skill rating on the second task, I uh, still hope for uh, comments of you uh, to help me out with this mess. For this time, we're going to continue with the third task, which is to capture code fragments. Surprise, surprise. Um, and apparently for the input number n, which is our only input to uh, our code fragment, we're supposed to return this neat string here. And for the input 2, we're supposed to return this other neat string here, which looks somewhat similar to the uh, first one, only that the looks it looks like the first one plus a suffix, only that this underscores here um, get longer. So actually the full the full uh, the number of digits here is uh, always the full sequence, only that the last n minus one last n minus two are replaced by underscores. So that's probably what we're supposed to uh, write to the output. So actually the output we generate here is quite good. Only that it is not yet the thing. Okay, um, we're going to iterate over zero, one, and two, or zero, one in this case because we have uh, n plus one groups here, and each group actually ends with a space, which is here, 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 and here. And within each group, we're going to output the numbers of n j equals zero, j smaller equal n, j plus plus. We're going to output plus equals j. But only if j is smaller than i, right? If j is smaller, smaller or equals actually smaller or equals than i, then I'm going to output j. Else, I'm going to output an underscore. Let's see if that works. No. Nope. Types of ternary conditional result expression are not compatible. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, I have to convert this to string. Is there a two string method? Or is it integer to string? I'm not sure. But we'll find out soon enough. Since it did not fail to compile. Ha! Okay. This apparently solved the task, and Microsoft even granted me the full skill rating for it. So I'm happy with my solution which is actually for the first time a simple plain nested loop solution and continue on with a fourth task. Again we have to capture a code fragment which is supposed to generate some pretty cryptic uh, strings. For the input one and an exclamation mark we're supposed to return I guess only dash and for the input 2 and an ampersand we're supposed to return dash ampersand space ampersand dash I guess there's no subsequent space and for 3 and an ampersand we're supposed to return dash ampersand ampersand space ampersand dash ampersand space ampersand ampersand dash which is actually mirrored on the on the middle character. 
it does not really help me yet. So I want to see some more uh, some more outputs to see what I actually I'm actually supposed to return. I'm I'm especially not sure what the um, output what the what the influence of the B string is supposed to be. So let's just find out and percentage and if n equals three return can I copy this? Yes. Can I copy this? And let's find out if there's some more input for me. Hopefully I will get it uh, the same. Ah okay. So this is the character we're actually supposed to use. This is nice. So the dash stays the same, but the other character is not always ampersand, but it's the, the character that is input only for one, it's too um too short to actually do any insertions. Okay. Let's see what's the pattern here. These two look the same except for the exclamation and the ampersand, but I'm not sure what's the pattern to create these strings. Okay, now here we have a dash and five ampersands. Here we have ampersand, dash, and four ampersand, so it's always six characters. The first is a dash, the second is a dash, the third is a dash, the fourth is a dash, the fifth is a dash, and the last one is a dash. So, okay. First one, last one makes sense. First one, second one, last one makes sense. Okay, I got the pattern. Um, how to generate this? We're going to loop over all the numbers um, smaller than n uh, it's, it's alright and then we're going to loop over them again 0 j is smaller than n j plus plus and for every case if if i equals j equals j we're going to add a dash and in the other case we're going to add a b and at the end we're going to end this add a space the only thing broken now is that we have no uh, trailing space so i'm going to do substring one here uh, no, that doesn't work. And I have to prepend this. Um, let's see if that solves the task. And if so, what's the skill rating? But apparently, I get something wrong here because the output string is apparently always empty. Ah, because I overwrite it here. There's a plus equal or it's, it's supposed to be a plus equal uh, so I have something appended okay so far so good managed to generate the strings it expected interesting to see that in this case he did not he didn't yet use any ampersand cases anymore where he had the most of last time but he has exclamation mark and asterisk um, test case is generated but anyhow this solution solves the problem and solves it with a, a sufficiently high skill rating for uh, me so let's continue on to the fifth task of sector 8 again we're supposed to create a string but this time we're supposed to create it from a string so the pattern looks somewhat familiar we get in um, 
the string of four A's and we're supposed to replace the first, the second, the third and the last one by an underscore. So what are we going to do? We create a string named output which is an empty string to begin with. Um, we loop over the length it's a string, so it's a method length. Um, we loop over this length of the string and for... <laughs> At first we're going to add an, a space like before. In the first one of this we cut off at the end because there's no leading or trailing space here. Could also trim it probably, but doesn't matter. Um, for in j, so we loop over the length of the string again. j smaller a dot length j plus plus and append to the output. Append to the output. Not doing the same error again. If i equals j, we're going to append an underscore, and in the other case, we're going to append a dot char at j. I guess this should be a solution, um, but again uh, this is character and string so I should do a two string here to make this work. But it does not work yet. Why doesn't it work? Ah, because I'm doing something wrong here. This should be output substring 1 and not a substring 1. So now we're generating correct strings and after only one test case the symbolic executor is actually convinced that we did it right so we can continue on to the next task. If you continue with that speed and I'm well aware that with saying that I'm probably going to fail at this very next task uh, but the, with this speed, uh, it should be possible to finish Sector 8 in this episode. Um, let's see how I fare. We're supposed to create a box on one line. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but anyways, um, there's a size input and again a string output. And again, we have as many blocks of this of the length of the number as the number, like three, three blocks, four, four blocks, and the blocks have three or four dollars. Only that the middle ones, the middle ones, only the first and the last are dollars and the last and the others are replaced by underscores and in the outer ones nothing's replaced. So let's see how we can do that. We actually loop over the number. That's right, we're doing that already. And again output plus equals a space which we cut off at the end. And now we are supposed to append something more these dollars in there. So it's j equals zero, j smaller th size, j plus plus. And we're going to append something to the output. Okay, only the condition now is more complicated, so maybe I add it to an if statement if i equals zero or i equals size minus one we're going to always append the dollar sign in the other case we're going to do output plus equals if j equals that's the exact same thing isn't it else if 
j equals zero or j equals size minus one, we're going to output dollar. Otherwise, we're going to output the underscore. It's not looking that nice yet, but let me see if it captures the solution. Looks pretty good, but it does not get the full skill rating yet, which I can somehow understand. Okay, let me see how I can improve this code somewhat. I can at least integrate these two, so I'll have four uh, conditions here but that does not help me and I can of course again remove this whole um, this whole if thing and replace it by a ternary operator which somehow this game seems to like let me see if that helps getting the full skill rating which it actually does. So this completes a task. Is there another task? Yes, actually there is one. But having a look at the time, I actually think this is going to end this episode of Let's Develop Cotant. As I said, I took my mouth too full, uh, proclaiming that I will finish Sector 8. This is probably one of the last tasks in the sector, but I'm going to defer to, an to another episode, I think. Um, yeah, there's two more tasks, so this, this is going to be a good episode. So, okay, thanks for watching. If you like this episode or court hand or just me, uh, please consider to subscribe to my channel or follow me on Twitter. I post regular updates on what I do. On what I do. And also, if you have any feedback, just drop me a comment or send me a message. I'm always happy to improve uh, on what I do, uh, re considering the comments or the feedback you give me. And uh, if you want to also have a look at the other contents I'm producing, like the Let's Develop with Maven and Eclipse, or the Let's Develop Conway's Game of Life, I'm sure that there's something in there you find interesting if you're into development. Okay, that's it for today, and hope to see you next time. Bye!